Hey guys, Adam Justice from ConnectSense, and I'm back from San Francisco and WWDC. And since getting back, I've gotten brave and installed the iOS 10 beta on all my personal devices. So today, we're gonna dive in further on everything that's new in iOS 10 with HomeKit and the new Home app. Okay, we've got iOS 10 beta 1 running on my iPhone 6s and not a lot to show you here that we haven't already walked through other than the fact that you can 3D touch right on the home icon here and run a scene right from 3D touch or create a new scene from scratch. Here we have watchOS 3 beta 1 running on my Apple Watch. So we're just going to click on the dock here and you can see we have the home running right here so we're going to click on it and within home you can see um, this is a simple list of our accessories so there's lights here and you can scroll through these using the digital crown um, so for any outlets or simple devices there's just a nice real switch here you can turn them on and off using that switch um, for anything that's dimmable um, so like this, you can actually use the digital crown to set the dimming, so that's pretty cool. Uh, in addition, if we scroll up, we can see our scenes. So then you can see your home name there, and then here are all my scenes. So these are, uh, you can just do one touch and turn on those, activate those scenes. And then lastly, uh, if you force touch, you can change location. So if you have multiple homes set up, really easy to change that using the Apple Watch. So there is the home app on watchOS 3 beta 1. Here we have iOS 10 beta 1 running on an iPad Pro. And the first thing I want to show you is actually in the settings. So we head down to the settings for the home app. So here you'll see the setting for use this iPad as a home hub. So as we talked about in the last video here, now if you have an iPad that's always at home, you can check this setting and then use that iPad as a home hub to access any of your HomeKit devices when you're away from home using your iPhone or any other devices. So this is a really great setting if you have an iPad that's always at home to act as that hub. Now let's take a look at that home app. So here's the main screen of the home app running on an iPad. So as you can see, if you use an iPad regularly, um, lots of screen real estate to be able to see all your favorite scenes and devices. So really great and looks great on an iPad. Um, one of the features I really like is kind of this summary thing up here. So you can see that I have five lights on and an outlet on right now. Um, that's really cool. Next, let's dive into rooms. So one of the comments in the last video, so thank you everybody who commented, was that instead of going through the rooms menu up here, that you can actually very easily just swipe through your rooms. So really quick, easy way to get through rooms and access different devices. Next, let's take a look at this automation tab. So if you watched the last video, you may have noticed that we didn't have access to anything in this automation tab. I've since learned there are three ways to get this automations to show up. So the first would be what I just showed you, which is enabling an iPad to act as that home hub. The next would be to have an Apple TV running tvOS 10 beta 1. But probably the simplest way is to download another HomeKit app that has support for triggers or automations or rules, whatever that app calls it. Um, so such as the ConnectSense app and adding a new automation in that app. So that will ena actually enable you to be able to see this automation tab in the home app. So once you've done that, you have some really great options. So you can see I've already set up a couple automations in my home. Let's take a look at the options from here. So you've got four options for your automations, which are when my location changes. So this is geofencing like options. 
at time of day occurs, when an accessory is controlled, or when a sensor detects something. So all great things to really get started on some home automation. So let's take a look at these. So uh, at a time of day occurs. Um, so one of the really great new features in here that was not available in iOS 9 is the, ab the ability to trigger something off of sunrise and sunset. Um, so if you have outside lights like I do, um, or just anything you want to run based on sunrise and sunset, which of course changes throughout the year, um, that's a great new option. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to set up an automation that I need to put in here. Um, so really easy option here also for repeating on days. All right, so we're gonna set up an op automation. Uh, my son has a night light that really shouldn't be on all night. And it's plugged into a ConnectSense smart outlet. Um, so now this will turn off at 10.30 at night every day. Uh, let's also take a look at um, the accessory based options. So this is a really great way to set up automations where um, you know when you do one thing, then you want it to control multiple things. So we're gonna say when I turn on this light in the morning, uh, then set my home for good morning. So as you can see, really easy to set up automations in there. Then um, one of the other great things is that these automations now sync across devices. So if you did any sort of rules or automations in iOS 9, um, they lived on that device only. And so now it's great that those sync across devices. Then lastly in here, I wanna show you when we dive into a device. So if you hold down on a device, you can kind of see its details. Um, and one of the great features in here is that within those details is actually a link to the manufacturer's app. And while you can do a lot, ton of great stuff within home, there's gonna be certain manufacturer features, firmware updates, things like that, that you're still gonna to wanna to head into the manufacturer's app for. So this is a really great, easy way to dive into that manufacturer's app. Just click open right from here. It's a really great uh, feature right built into home. So that is some more about the home app in iOS 10 beta one. So now we've got our Apple TV here running tvOS 10 beta. And using this beta, we can now use Siri commands using the Apple TV remote. Set my thermostat to 72 degrees. Set my home for I'm leaving. Last thing, I want to show you one more cool thing that I found. So about a month ago, I got a car that features CarPlay in it. And being that I work for a manufacturer of HomeKit devices, one of the first things I tried was whether or not I could do Siri voice commands for HomeKit uh, within CarPlay. And in iOS 9, this does not work. But of course, I tested this after upgrading my phone to iOS 10 beta 1. And HomeKit commands do work with CarPlay now. And I'll show you how this works. Set my home for I'm leaving. Hasta la casa, baby. So there you go. So that's what we found so far in iOS 10 beta one. I'm gonna to continue to live with this day in and day out and bring you future videos as we find more features or as there are new betas. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions about beta one, the home app or anything else in iOS 10, please hit me up in the comments below. Thanks for watching.